What's up everyone, it's Tex206 and welcome back to another video. Today is the long awaited how to make a Pokemon Cry video. I know a lot of you have constantly been asking me on my Mazda Reason fan made cry videos, Tex, how the heck did you make these cries? And it's very, very simple. It's literally just iMovie combined with a bunch of already pre-existing Pokemon Cries. But today I'm going to show you the in-depth process on how I basically merged that all together to make a coherent new cry. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so this is how I make Pokemon cries. Um, I didn't know that they were this good um, and that many people liked them, but yeah, it's like really this, the, I'm, the main reason why I'm surprised is because it's really simple. Anyone can do this. So first things first, this is literally iMovie. This is iMovie on my iPad right now. And that's all, it did, that's all I used just to get this. And then got the sources of the Pokemon Cries and used that. And I basically just used uh, a background picture or the screenshot picture of the Pokedex entry for the people, uh, Pokemon in Maza just so I know what cry I'm looking at and basically try to work around the design with the cry. Again, it's not gonna be too, nothing too complex, but this is basically just the basic rundown on how I make a cry. And then after we do this, I will go and make an original cry, one more, one last Maza reason cry. Uh, for this video and then I'll play all the cries I've made in one little video So you don't have to click all of them separately if you want to see a specific cry or whatnot. This is Hummy Pummel So let's just hear what it sounds like hmm, Pretty interesting. So you're probably wondering how did I do this? Well, it's pretty simple. So we're in iMovie. This is right here This is just the image. This is just an image block right here on the track And then these are the three separate audio tracks this one right level actually before that Let's put them all back to normal speed since I spend most of these, uh, most, well, yeah, most of the time I speed the cries up to differentiate from the original Pokemon cries that are mashed together. Because if you couldn't tell, most of my Pokemon cries, if not all, use other Pokemon cries. Pretty, I, I'd say like 99 or 98% of the cries that I've made are literally just the previously existed Pokemon cries. So let's hear this first one down here. <laughs> So that one right there is Wug Trio's cry. So let's go over here to the next one, the second track. That one is Arbeliva's cry. And then let's go to this one right here, the first one on top. And that one is either Enamorous Hysterian or Genie Form, one of the, one of the two. And um, each one has a specific way of demonstrating the attributes of the Pokemon. So first things first, for Wug Trio's cry, I wanted to get this part here to demonstrate the bird attribute of this Pokemon because, you know, it's a bird. I know hummingbirds don't, I don't think normally make that kind of sound, but just to give it that bird feel, we use this cry right here from Wug Trio. So I'm just gonna speed that up again and let's hear it. There you go. That sounds more like a, a little bit more like a bird. Let's speed up one more time and see how that sounds. Yeah, that's a bit too fast for my liking, so let's just keep it here. There we go, that sounds good. So now let's move on to the second track. Now this track here, for Our Believers Cry. As you can see, that's not exactly how we had it originally. But the basis of what Our Believers Cry is trying to be is basically it's trying to demonstrate the wing flaps. So let me um, mute the Walk Trio Cry. As you can see, or not really as you can see, as you can hear, you can hear leaf rustles. And I'm gonna use those leaf rustle sound effects from our believer to basically demonstrate the wing flaps of this Pokemon. So if we speed it up just a little bit, then we should be able to hear it more like a wing flap. See, with the way that it just moves quickly. So it's like a big wing flapping. And then that's what I'm basically trying to get out of, of our believer's cry. And then also the extra sound effects. Like the liquid cry kind of making sense because it's a hummingbird because it drinks nectar and it's like oh maybe that's the nectar that it has in its beak currently and then that woo 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 that's also uh, please don't clip that <laughs> um but that part right there is basically trying to like add on to the bird feature as well at least a, a bird sound now let's go to enamorous's cry and see how this adds into the cry so this is a main defining part at least for the cries I try to do. For my cries, I don't want to make them just sound like animals because that's boring, okay? Later generations, there's mostly just bark, that's it. 
Fido. That's literally an example. Fido is literally just a bark. It may be with some twinkle sound effects. I don't know. I haven't looked at Fido's cry, but in a while. But basically, I'm trying to make it more mystical. You see, how, these are pocket monsters. All right, they're powerful. They're magical creatures. They shouldn't just have normal sounding effects that we hear in our everyday lives. I want to at least try to make it sound more special, more like a special creature that's different from your everyday creature or everyday animal so to speak. So this part right here for Ingamorous's cry is to add a little bit more pizzazz to it, especially since this is supposed to be like a pre-pseudo Pokemon. I don't know if that's changed or not. From the video, it says that it is trying to be a pre another pre-pseudo Pokemon. And also I make sure to uh, change the volume of the cries accordingly, depending on how much I want the volume to be implemented into it. So we didn't want Rugtrio's cry to be too loud. So if we put it back at a hundred, then Rugtrio's cry kind of overpowers the other two cries that have been added. So it's best to keep it at least a little lower level to make sure that it doesn't overpower the other audio tracks. Now for Enamorous's cry, I like to speed it up just a tad bit like here, just two nubs. So the magical part of Enamorous's cry doesn't overstay its welcome, but also is enough to make it feel, okay, yeah, this is a magical hummingbird. This is what we think like a magical, flapping, powerful fla hummingbird would sound like. So th that's basically my thought process on how these cries work. I just take bits and pieces of cries and try to mush them together and see what works. And I actually wanted to try to use some of the new generation you know, Pokemon, so you can probably hear a lot of the new gen cries in my recent and last um, Maserizen cry video. So without further ado, that's basically how I make Hummy Pummels cry. But now let's go on to the new original cry we'll make for this video to show you the thought process of how it, I generally work. Okay, so this is my new project. I decided to do Year in Aqua. I know it already has a cry, most likely, for the... Um, Pokemon Untamed already, but just for the hell of it, I thought, why not? Let's just do Your Knock Was Quiet as an example. So, I'm just gonna shorten the length of this just a bit, just so that it doesn't go too far off. Um, so basically, what ideas I tried to get from this Pokemon store, I tried to look at it and I'm like, hmm, what would this Pokemon would sound like? This is what I first comes to mind. What do I think this thing would sound like? So basically, Yurinaka, it's a pretty sad Pokemon, the backstory of this Pokemon. So obviously, we're gonna want some like, sad, like at least some sort of woman voice, I guess you can say, for this Pokemon. Some feminine-like voice, a deep feminine voice that echoes a little bit. That's what I get from this Pokemon. We want probably some water aspects from this too. But also I feel like it could be a little bit like snickery as well, if you understand what that means. Um, good for you. But um, basically, that's what we're gonna try to do with this cry. So I picked up a few cries. I'll put I'll put a link in the description for um, where I got every Gen 1 to Gen 9 cry from. I'll put a shout out in the editing this video as well. Um, so I felt like, hmm, maybe Liopard would sound pretty good. So I'm gonna get the cry for Liopard. Then I'm gonna go here and put audio only. So I'm gonna try to move it a little bit. If you wanna be more super professional, because again, I'm not like professional at audio or anything. You can add fades to these, so it sounds a bit more crisper, more smoother. So it doesn't like jump. But personally, I don't use that, that too often. But if you wanna be that like um, professional about it, go right ahead. Okay, so obviously sounding like Leaper, not good enough for me. I'm gonna try to lower down the pitch in the length of this and see. Hmm. Oh, okay, so I kind of like that. So I'm gonna take this part. I'm gonna take this part of the cry. I'm gonna extend it. I'm gonna fade it out a bit. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm gonna take off this fade so I can move the fade a bit more over here. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe it should be more of a steep. There we go. Okay, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. I'm okay with this. Okay, that works. So, also, just a little heads up for iMovie, at least in this case, for the mobile. 
It only has up to three audio tracks, so a loophole around this is just save your project and then uh, export the video, make a new project, put that video in, and then you can add three more tracks after that. So um, I would say still keep the original project file just in case you want to make a few changes from the first stage of the cry. Um, forgot to mention that when looking at Humming Pole's cry. I didn't actually re-render it again, add more stuff onto it afterward. That's just the cry as it is there. But I just wanted to bring that up just in case you're like, oh, why can't I put more uh, audio tracks in it? It's because there's only three audio tracks you can put up here besides uh, the fourth mystical one, which is the background track, which is just more harder to work with. So I would just recommend not using that. I think I want to get, let's try Curlia's cry. I want to try Curlia's cry for a minute. And I feel like I want to put it much lower. Ooh, did you hear that? Like, did you hear that? Oh, that sounds good. Look at this. Wait, here. Oh, that makes it sound like it's reverberating in the water. That's actually accident. That's an accident and that actually sounds good. That's a bit too deep for my liking. I think we're gonna keep it like this. And then I want to fade it out a bit faster. Like this. Ooh, okay. Actually, I think I'm I'm gonna maybe extend it even more. Okay, so I think that's a good um, audio to use. We're just gonna put it in the back a little bit. We're gonna want it in the background. Doesn't want to overpower the other things too much. We're gonna use that basically as that mystifying element to add to the Pokemon Cry. Okay. Yeah, that's sounding good. That's sounding good. Um, up next, what do I want to do? I I think I want to add Marini's cry, I think. Either Marini or Toxapex. Oh yeah, you can oh yeah, you can hear it. You probably could hear this if you play its cry. Does that sound familiar? Uh oops, actually add it onto that. Does that sound familiar? Because that actually is a sample of <laughs> a freaking Malagata's cry, freaking Marini. Here's there's a little fun fact for you if you couldn't um, find out originally. Um if you just accidentally add it to the track, it's not a big deal. Just detach it from the video and then just Delete it after. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's put it under here. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna wanna shrink that a little bit. Lower it just a tad. Yeah, but let's see what happens if we speed it up. Hmm, doesn't sound too bad. Let me see it again. Yeah, nah. Let's let's make it deeper. Okay, and then drag this out a bit and fade. Ooh, I like to play it back constantly just so I can better hear it. Yeah, I think that's good. I think we got the cry that I would like for this. Pokemon, yeah, unless I want to add anything else, I don't think I do. Um, nah, not really. Um, uh, maybe Sinistee? Or, I mean, Poldegeist? Or, hmm. Ooh, that Screech might actually be good. Actually, hold up a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna delete the live part cry. Sorry if you guys like the live part part of it, but I have an idea with Hatane. Ooh, and then we lower the volume a bit on this. Okay, let, let me raise that a bit more if I can. There we go. Also, I don't have headphones on currently, mainly because when I do, my audio goes to shit because <laughs> they're Bluetooth. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm... If it sounds a bit different in the end result it, with all the Cry collabs together, then the main reason is because, well, I went back and changed the audio levels of it. Um, because the audio levels are probably not going to stay permanently here, mainly because I can't hear them too well. I'm only hearing off the iPad, not off my headphones. So it's a bit harder to manipulate or get a general range of how it sounds. Okay, I think I'm gonna lower it just a bit more, more in the 50 range, I think. All right, there we go. So that is the unique cry. And I hope you enjoy how to make a Pokemon cry. This is how I do it. Now you can recreate it as well. 
And without further ado, have a good time gaming, guys. Peace out. Have an awesome day. And um, enjoy all the Pokemon cards put into one video. Boom.